here and now, here we are in convergence with Belgium, with Red Wasp, with Ottawa, Canada, with Ahmed of Palestine, and with myself, uh, Dr. Abrahim Weisfeld, here in Montreal, Quebec. And that's the way you pronounce it. Quebec is some sort of perversion. Somebody in England land, Anglo land there in Canada, thought that we should be called something other than what we are. Anyway, we are Quebecois, and not Quebecers. That sounds you know, ridiculous to me. And one day Quebec will be free, just like Palestine will be free sure. as well. And we're hearing from Ahmad on the terrible situation, especially in northern Gaza now. Yep. And it There's feels... Uh, mm -hmm. Go ahead. It feels uh, like <clears throat> we are confronting the biggest power backed by the United States of America in history. And it's the Palestinian people who are standing up to this power, the biggest imperialist power in all of human history. Yep. Yes. There's uh, two points or two items I'd like to bring uh, to this discussion or to uh, as a note. Number one is uh, uh, man-made Israeli soldiers, military uh, uh, starvation um, of uh, northern west, uh, northern uh, Gaza Strip, which is the location localities of Beit Hanun, Jabalia, Jabalia refugee camps, and Beit Lahia. There's about four hundred thousand people are being encircled sieged, uh, not allowing in food, water, medicine, um, even uh, allowing them to get out to for uh, treatment in the hospitals. A couple of hospitals being shut down in that area. Uh, the Zionists are sending uh, booby trap, uh, um, uh, remote control, uh, big vehicles with lots of explosions that enters into areas and detonate among civilians. Um, the bodies are on, on the streets, the bodies in the rubble. Nobody is picking them up because the Zionist, uh, you know, uh, drones are shooting at people. This has been happening for almost two weeks, actually from the beginning of uh, October, uh, under the guise of uh, diversion uh, the world, uh, uh, you know, um, however, focusing on Lebanon and, and to Iran or with the expected uh, Zionist aggression on Iran. So all the media and attention to the northern of Palestine and to Iran. Meantime, the Zionists are uh, carrying out their uh, plan of uh, ethnic cleansing northern Gaza Strip as being stipulated by their own uh, plans. So this is this is a very, very dangerous situation. Never been like this since uh, October 7, 2023. So we have to bring at attention to the world that the people are being starved, killed. Actually, it's just a genocide, a real, actually, a real slaughter is going on in northern Gaza. So we have to do something about it. The world has to wake up and intervene to stop the Zionists from uh, murdering and ethnic cleansing over 400,000 Palestinians from the northern Gaza. That's number one. Number two, just about about 20 minutes ago, it's, uh, there was an attack, a drone attack on a Zionist base uh, in uh, Akka. Uh, northern Palestine. Uh, the the talk by the Zionist media it was a major attack. Uh, tens of soldiers being killed and injured. Even uh, Channel Twelve, the Zionist Channel Twelve, uh, reported there was a, a very important personality in that uh, base being attacked by Hezbollah. So those two notes I'd like to bring uh, to attention. Uh, one a very sad news. One is a very good news to to uh, make the the murderers, uh, neo Nazis, pay for their crimes they done to Lebanon and Palestine. There's another okay. note to be made as well. The United States has now 
brought troops into Palestine to uh, set up an anti-ballistic missile system, supposedly to take on Iranian uh, missiles when Israel attacks with great force and they expect a counterattack from Iran. And they're setting up this anti-ballistic missile battery there with U.S. troops, not Zionist troops, U.S. troops. So, <laughs> but, you know, it's like a, a chess game. So they're uh, advancing their piece, you know, into the domain uh, that they claim they are not supporting. Okay, well, they are. They're involved in the war now. Now, what uh, the significance of these uh, anti-ballistic missiles is, is that, you know, Iran just has to counter the move, you know, by using something that's even more strategically effective, and that is a hypersonic missile. And I don't think that the anti-ballistic missile in and of itself is going to be able to take that on. What they should be taking out now are the military uh, airstrips, you know, what they have bombed before in the Nariv, uh, I think, military base. You know, I saw two craters, you know, in the reports, one of a warehouse and one of an empty field. Meanwhile, the F-35s, you know, are all lined up there ready to go. You know, it's, it's got to be a much more effective strike in order to stop, you know, any major retaliation and offensive against Iran as a whole by both the Zionist state and the United States of America, because Iran is this, the stronghold of the resistance <clears throat> and it has to be protected. Well, the, the American personnel is already in Palestine long time before they announced the, you know, transferring the new troops, about 100 of them, with this called THAAD, THAAD, uh, anti-missile, uh, anti-ballistic uh, missiles uh, uh, system. There's uh, over 6,000 American troops in Palestine, as I said, uh, long before. But uh, today it was uh, announced officially by the United States that we are part of the defense of Israel. Um, the war on Palestine, Gaza Strip, and on a lower, uh, you know, uh, scheme in, on the West Bank and to Lebanon, it's it's a, actually it's a joint attack or a joint, um, you know, uh, murders spree by uh, the Zionists and the Americans. So uh, it's it's everybody everybody, everybody knows it's uh, the worst kept secret that the united states is part of this war yeah yep. it's incredible how how they play this uh, pr game now we are in like as if they were not there before as we speak mm -hmm. uh, um the zionists uh, are um, going to attack uh, iran uh, they talk about it as if like it's a it's a it's a complete mission like it's a success as if even before they started, okay mm -hmm. nobody knows that if they will ever be succeed successful, nobody knows if Iran has good uh, anti aircraft missiles, a good advanced one. There's talk that Russia and and China had supplied them with those uh, advanced. Uh, uh, you know, systems. S four hundred, yeah. S four hundred and other other ones. So, um, and uh, nobody knows. Like this, the, the everybody talks in the Western media as like it's just it's a done deal. It's like it's over. It's the fate of Iran to be hit, and that it will be successful. It's it's rubbish. Nobody knows. And the Iran is said, we are the, we are ready. When they say ready, that's they're ready. And and they might uh, hit back on the Zionist even before those planes are returned back to the Zionist state. They mm -hmm. might destroy all those air airfields. So yes, uh, mm -hmm. yes. So uh, uh, I'm waiting. It's 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 a uh, it's I'm waiting to see what's happened. I yeah. I'm not wishing the Zionists will attack Iran, but. You know, uh, I'm expecting they will, but uh, not necessarily to be a successful mission. Could be a just total debacle. Mm -hmm. It will be, could mm -hmm. be a failure. You never know what could have happened. Yes, it could be a cascading yes, failure as well, you know, because if the United States is implicated uh, in an offensive against Iran, then Iran has justification for attacking 
U.S. military assets in the region. And there's plenty of military bases from which to choose, you know, as a target. And there's uh, American military bases even right next door in Jordan, as you explained to me. Six American and plus a number of other uh, bases as well. What happened? Hello? Uh, there, okay, we're okay. Yeah. So I'm Something saying that happened. the American military bases become a legitimate target if the United States becomes more and more implicated in, in the Zionist wars against uh, uh, Gaza, Lebanon, Syria, and Iran. Well, Iran can retaliate, you know, like uh, logically it can retaliate if the United States is implicated in all of these wars, can retaliate not against the United States of America, no, against the U.S. military bases where they shouldn't be, in Jordan. In Iraq, Jordan, Kuwait, you know, the Arab Emirates, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, oh. Oman, uh, they're in Kazakhstan, in, and uh, Palestine, North, too. In Palestine, in Syria, in, in the occupied areas of Syria, in Iraq, in yeah. you know, it just uh, it even in Egypt, they have plain, you know, bases. Uh, Iran made it clear uh, officially in an official term that if the United States be taking a part of the attack on its soil, uh, the Iranians will will not have the right now. They will attack those bases that uh, the attackers uh, start from. So, and they told the people, the countries in, in the region who are traitors, you know, they are just nothing but traitors, that if um, the Zionists use your air, air, air uh, space, to, uh, yeah, airspace to attack our country, will mm -hmm. hit you, will mm -hmm. hit you back, and, yes. and no, no two is about it. And this applies to other countries as well, like you know, the United Kingdom, as it calls itself, you know, with its military base in Cyprus. Well. You know, like if they want to send, you know, military aircraft from Cyprus space, you know, then they should expect a response. Definitely. I'm sure they are, they are in the works for the Iranians mm -hmm. uh, to uh, retaliate. So I'm sure that the Americans made it more than clear that they will not attack Iran. They will just only work to defend Israel. Poor Israel need to be defended. OK, yeah. so that's not considered as an aggression by the Iranians. If you want to defend them, go ahead, defend them. But if you attack and we know that if you were attacked, we will hit you back. Yeah. There's no two ways about it. The Iranians are really emboldened yeah. on, on their own strengths and they will not uh, re resort back to that strategical patience they used yeah. to have anymore. Mm -hmm. So that's over. That's off the table. So you hit me, I'll hit you back harder. So there's talk about over 1,000 uh, ballistic missiles are aimed on the Zionist state if the Zionists attack Iran. So we're not talking about 200 or 180. We're talking about 1,000. Those got to be hitting the Zionist state hard. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So be aware, Zionist. It's, it's not a, a walk in the park as it used to be. Yeah. Today, Hezbollah is uh, is uh, increasing its firepower, expanding on the bases and uh, the Zionist uh, colonies. Um, even since the morning, so far, is about they talk about fifty to seventy Israeli soldiers being too injured. Of course, nobody dies there as the Zionists. <laughs> they are, uh, you know, they're Robocops. They're and now with this uh, drones attack, okay, on this base uh, in, near between Haifa and Akka, I think it's uh, it's a major escalation. There's lots of dead and injured, and as I said, there's a possibility of uh, the presence of uh, an important personality in that uh, uh, piece. Who knows? Could be anybody. It could be just just a speculation. Would be gallant, yes, gallant. I vote for gallant. I, I, I think that um, all, all show something that 
for many decades, the Zionists have been able to fool us uh, into thinking that they had this superior te technological army that was unbeatable. That um, since a year, we know that this is well. Actually, we knew that in two thousand when they were kicked out of Lebanon. We knew that in two thousand six when they were kicked out of Lebanon again. Um, but right now, I think that uh, the, the the Americans going there openly to install troops and so on that that's just an admission that their army is nothing uh, of what they said it was. Mm -hmm. uh, as I know, I've never been to the Zionist state, but what I hear from uh, uh, people here and what I hear from people there is that uh, most Zionists, most colonists, they don't want to fight. They don't want to die for their country. They'd rather flee away. And there are many people right now escaping. And um, nobody knows what the effect will be of the drone attack today. But I think that um, in the next few days, most flights out of uh, uh, the Zionist state will be fully booked again, like they were uh, a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And there, there is really, there's an exodus going. People are trying to dodge their uh, their, 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 their um, army duty. So I think that the, the, the colonial army of the Zionists has a big problem that it never had be, uh, before. That's why they need far more help from uh, Big Brother, from the, the big colonizer, uh, the, the, the Washington regime. Um, but even them, as I said a few times in, 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 in other conversations before, they are getting broke. They don't have the money to keep paying their, their, their forever proxy wars in Ukraine, in Palestine. And so um, they have uh, the, the political divide in uh, the United States has never been as deep as it is now. I, I believe that we are really, and it will be brutal in the near future, but in the, the, the let's say the, the, the semi-distant future, um, we are seeing the, the 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 collapse of the the American unipolar form of imperialism. Nobody has any guarantee of what will happen after that, but it will be different. It will no longer be led from Washington. It will be led from different centers, and inshallah, maybe that's the last form of imperialism. If we are able, if our class, we are billions. We're not just millions. We're billions of people. Our class, if we are able to organize to find ways to make our uh, um, our internal divisions into a strength, uh, our diversity into a strength instead of a, a weakness. Inshallah, we are able to organize the people uh, for a revolution. And this may be the last imperialist uh, uh, um, phase that our species has to go through. Of course, nobody, but I, I do believe that the American system is broke. It, 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 it cannot be repaired anymore. It will collapse either slowly or quickly, but. Yes, true. Yeah, that's the momentum that you. we have going for us that. now. Yeah. I was going to ask that's Steve, you know, about the student movement, you know, and the opposition protest movement in the United States. Well, there have been. There have been Hi, Steve. Hi, there have been protests off, off the campuses. The campuses are pretty quiet. Like I mentioned in our previous broadcast, the universities and uh, I think the FBI and the Department of Homeland Security and the White House were able to um, um, create a sense of fear and also repression. In a case of New York University, for example, the Zionists have been able to twist U.S. law to make it now that they are a protected class. Therefore, you cannot criticize them on campus. So that's that's what has happened in the United States. There are still demonstrations. There's a big demonstration last weekend across the country in many different centers, but they're no longer they're no longer um being focused on the campuses and more in the parks and in the streets of the major cities because they're not quiet but we're not seeing the encampments anymore the encampment movement seems to have been crushed by the administrations during the summertime that's what i see but there's still students coming there's still students mobilizing on campus they have tables they're holding meetings this is not the way it was last year but movements movements rise and fall they have ebb and flow and the opposition hasn't hasn't decreased it's just not being this not being allowed on campuses the way it was. 
There could be teach-ins like there were in the 60s right, for right, masses right. of people. You know, that's a right. stage at which that would attract, you know, thousands of people. You know, we could get down uh, to the nitty-gritty there. Yes. I think Ahmed. what's going on, what's happening now in the United States, um, everybody is gearing toward the uh, elections. It's mm -hmm. coming within two to three weeks, two to three weeks. So everybody is gearing on, on the to vote against uh, Harris. And I think that's where the activities are going through. Not so much like it used to be before uh, summer, supporting Palestine and occupying the, the universities. It's more, more and more supporting the third candidates and uh, really punishing the Democratic Party for their crimes in Gaza. So mm -hmm. I think after uh, the dust settles, on uh, November fifth, right. uh, I believe that uh, the uh, the Palestine the Solidarity Movement for Palestine and now Lebanon will uh, restart it again and uh, with veracity. Um, so uh, let's just wait and see. But uh, it, the the momentum of solidarity, not just in the United States, worldwide, is still going strong. There's uh, all most of the world community, especially the 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 old so the south the south countries or the the world the south world are um, working together into bringing about the the siege of the Zionist uh, genocide in Gaza and now in Lebanon. So um, the moment is, is taking, it's moving forward. It's not going to go back. Uh, I am very uh, optimistic that uh, the Zionist and American uh, genocide in Gaza will be more and more besieged by the world, especially the dark South or the people of the South, talking mm -hmm. about you know, like Africa, Latin America, Asia, in support with China and Russia as a major power supporting us. Mm -hmm. huh. So it's like a, a siege on a siege. Exactly, exactly. You got to siege those people. You have. We have no choice. We have either to to besiege them or capitulate. And uh, there's no chance that we will capitulate. People don't capitulate. States do capitulate. Uh, armies capitulate. People and liberation movement don't capitulate. They might retreat, but they will fall. This is the this is how history, you know, taught us, you know, to, to the knowledge that people never defeated. The people united will never be defeated. Much like Algeria. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Algerians fought for a hundred thirty-two years. Mm -hmm. Over ten million people over one hundred thirty-two years. Okay, died in in the quest of liberation. Finally, the French could get kicked out after they they had the last year or so of a, over one million people slaughtered mm -hmm. by the French troops by De Gaulle, Charles De Gaulle, the Mister Lib mm -hmm. Liberation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, who was supposedly uh, you know supported colonialism. He was a colonialist, you know. Yes, he was a big colonialist. He but he was also, you know, you know, uh, he was also uh, able to think, you know, and he saw that what was happening, you know, was uh, the liberation of Algeria, and there was nothing to stop it. You know? Yeah, so he, he was a he was a, a pragmatical pragmatist uh, colonist. Yeah, pragmatic pragmatic colonialist. Pragmatic colonialist, colonist, exactly. That's, that's <laughs> what, what a, he called. Strange combination of words. Yeah, it is. It is. But he was yeah. pragmatic. He was not so stupid as Netanyahu, for example, yeah. or, or George Bush uh, W. Jr. Okay, yeah. they're those two are idiots. They're morons. Yeah. But uh, Charles de Gaulle, he's, he realized that there's nothing we can do but to get out of the hell of Algeria. Yeah, interesting character. I saw a film documentary on him. Biography, yes. and he started from nothing. You know, not even England. You know, was supporting him at first. He had to get support of England first. Yes, incredible. Yes. It was just a sort of a minor general. You know, like who was ignored, otherwise. But he turned things around. It's sort of a something of a 
revolutionary experience. And so it can seem to continue the momentum of that liberation from the Nazism continued on into the liberation of the Algerians as well. Interesting exactly. phenomena. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I think it, one of the things that, that may help us uh, understand uh, the goal is, is if we look at the Second World War as actually two war, wars going on at the same time. There was the anti-fascist war, which we all know, but it, there was also an anti, uh, an, an inter-imperialist aspect to it. Mm. And people like Churchill, the Gaul, um, the, 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 the American presidents and so on, um, they weren't in it mostly because of anti-fascism, because actually they didn't mind fascism. Mm. I, I, um, the, the concentration camps that Hitler used were more or less invented by uh, um, uh, uh, Churchill uh, for the Boers in um, South Africa. So this this whole, uh, they were not against it in principle, but um, the, the the German imperialists were like the, the biggest competitors. So there was this uh, inter-imperialist aspect to it also. So for the goal, um, liberating France didn't mean liberating the French people so they could be free. It meant liberating a state so it could be back under the the, 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 the government of the French ruling class, the French imperialist, the, 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 the French um, bourgeoisie, because that's how it's supposed to be. They shouldn't be exploited by Germans, but by French. That's that's better somehow. I think. Yeah, uh, very true. Um, actually, the, the Western colonists, were, meaning uh, the, the French, the English, the... Uh, the British, uh, the Americans, didn't mind uh, the rise of the Nazis in Europe. Actually, they had secret agreements that as long as you are rising and hitting back at the Soviet Union and mm -hmm. get rid of those communists within, uh, you know, from us, from the world, we will support you. So when he started his war, they didn't mind anything. They didn't say, okay, you go ahead. You do it They're like uh, no problem. They're like he, they did not stop him. They supported him. The only thing they they objected to him when he took over France and he started moving toward to the west, you know, Belgium and Holland and this and that. They said, okay, now we have to fight you because you're not you're not you're not doing what you're supposed to do to fight the, only the Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know they 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 did a small part of defeating uh, the Nazis. Okay, who who did the real job? Big job is the Soviet Union, the Russian, the Russian army, the mm -hmm. Russian army who defeated uh, the Soviet Union, uh, the Red Army, the actually who defeated the 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 Third Reich, who mm -hmm. liberated most of Europe, right into Berlin. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, yes, I agree with you that he he they fought him just because he ch he wants to change. Uh, from one colonial uh, imperialist uh, system to another one. So they had what they had to fight them. But uh, at the beginning, they were all on board. Fight. Mm -hmm. Go take Poland, no problem. Poland and mm -hmm. the rest of the Soviet Union, go for it. We'll go, yeah. we'll help you. And, and you can see how anti fascist they were, if you know that Churchill actually more or less organized a famine uh, in, in uh, Bengal, um, in India. Yes. So yes. he have his Asian part of the imperialist war. So he didn't really care about people. And um, Churchill was an arch anti-Semite, um, many in the French government also, so that um, they didn't care about the Jewish people. The Jewish yeah. people became important uh, for yeah. the European ruling class as soon as they had this colony, which pretended to be a Jewish colony in uh, West Asia. Um, from then on, it, it was like there was so much lip service to the Jewish people. And as long as they get out of Europe and they all go to the colony. And so, yeah, it's very convenient to have a bunch of uh, Zionists, you know, who are willing mercenaries on behalf of a new crusade. And That's the crusade awful. started in 1917 with General mm -hmm. Allenby. But the British, you know, couldn't sustain it, you know, because they got kicked out. The Palestinians were too strong for them. So what did they do? They used, you know, like a, a mad dog that they call, you know, the Zionist state. But it's all, all it is is a mad dog of imperialism. And the IDF should stand for imperialist death force. That's all it is. It is. It yeah. is. And, and, you know, and, and, as, as for the, the, the Jews in Europe during the Second World War, actually before that, 
and little after, they were considered expendable people, like the gypsies and uh, the people with disabilities or uh, people who are, uh, you know, from, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, you know, the, who are dark or communists or socialists. All these people are, they were uh, expendable. So uh, the, the, I knew, everybody knows that the British knew from the first day there was, you know, uh, Holocaust and concentration camps, they didn't do nothing about it. They didn't even say a word about it they, because yeah. these are dark people are expendable. They, they're not, they're not white. So who cares? Mm. Yeah. I, I would even argue that in the eyes of the Western imperialist bourgeoisie, they still are expendable. Um, they are a human shield in West Asia that is there to protect the Western imperialist uh, interest. And really, they don't care if they are murdered in the, the in the thousands, if they um, because they are there as a buffer between the so-called savages, the Asians, um, and then the the, mm. the the cultural Western uh, imperialist mass murderers. So mm. even today, the phalanges. Um, the, the, one of the things that the, the, if you look at. Um, especially uh, in the first years, the years before the, the, the creation of the Zionist state and just after, um, most of the migrants who made so-called Aliyah um, were Jewish proletarians. That was a Jewish proletariat, mostly Ashkenazim and um, Mizrahim. The Jewish bourgeoisie didn't want to go to there. They, 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 they remained safely in the United States, in England. Um, of course, they had their capital there, and now they had the Jewish proletariat there as a human shield to uh, protect their investments. The Rothschilds, uh, they have invested in uh, the, the um, in Palestine, especially in the Suez Canal, but also in, 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 in many of the, the projects they had in Palestine. But they never went to live there. They, they remained in their comfortable European big villas, um, and the Jewish proletariat had to go there, and they had to die for the interests of the Jewish bourgeoisie and the rest of the, the imperialist bourgeoisie. Until today, it's 2024, not even once Rothschild ever lived in Palestine. They all lived in the, the West. That's that's just how how twisted the logic of the Balfour Declaration to the mm -hmm. Rothschild. You know, it's just uh, it's beyond my you know beyond my imagination how 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 they use the poor and and uh, the most uh, vulnerable to be mm -hmm. shipped to Palestine mm -hmm. and become, you know, the, the Zionist state. It's sad, yeah. but it's the truth. But yeah. now those people are become themselves becoming the new Nazis in the Middle East the, yeah. by the genocide in Gaza. So, you know, they were poor and uh, impoverished and proletariat. But now their their offsprings are uh, nothing but uh, new fascists or new Nazis in in what they're doing in Gaza and now we're doing in Lebanon. It's mm -hmm. the same thing as the Nazis did, uh, even worse in in Europe, but yeah. not by number, but at least by the deeds. I can confirm that you know because my father told me that when they were in the refugee camp, the uh, Zionists you know would beat up the Bundes who would argue against the Zionists when the Zionists came into the refugee camp, recruiting people to go to Palestine. And the Bundists would say, no, don't go. You know, that's a war. You know, if you go oh. there, you have to fight a war and, and you would be, you know, killing people, you know, who yes. are not Nazis, you know. And so the Zionists would beat them up for saying that. Yep. That's, you know, how it happened. That's right. Yes. Yeah. 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 I, I want to just bring back uh, um, about the, the Sephardi or Mizrahi Jews they did not uh, immigrate to Palestine before 1948. Just a few, a few hundreds maybe, uh, who were uh, educated and they were in, in Europe. They got in contact with the Zionists who immigrated to Palestine, because the Ashkenazi Jews, the white Jews, okay, they practiced also uh, apartheid <laughs> against mm -hmm. the dark Jews. So mm -hmm. they, they didn't want the, the dark Jews. They were yeah. thought they will have an Ashkenazi white only Jewish state in Palestine by bringing all those because 90 to 95 percent of the Jews the world the world of the no, the Jewish uh, uh, jury the the world jury are Ashkenazi so they thought they will bring all those uh, Ashkenazi into Palestine have a white state in Palestine we don't need those uh, you know. Uh, um, 
uh, lower caste uh, Jews uh, who are Arab Jews. Mm -hmm. But uh, by 1948, they only had like four to 500,000 Jews from Europe, colonists, and that was not enough to start a, a state. Y you need more. So uh, what they did, they start working with their own uh, tools, the, the Arab Jews, in order to bring in uh, those Arab Jews from Morocco, from Tunisia, Libya, uh, Egypt, Syria, Lebanon, Iraq, Yemen. And uh, they would not move the, the Arab Jews. They were just Arabs They're living in their own homes. And they were not living in ghettos. They were just living next to door to Christian or Muslims or Druze or whatever. And they were just... Uh, part of the society, no discrimination whatsoever, no look at them as a second class citizen. But uh, the Zionists they start to bomb their sh shops and synagogues like they did in Iraq. They collaborated with, uh, you know, royal families who are uh, tools, uh, Western tools, uh, by forcing Arab Jews into ships and into uh, planes to go to the Zionist paradise. <laughs> so they, they between 1949 to 1955, it took them six years to bring most of the Arab Jews back into Palestine. Some of those Jews, actually, they left the Zionist state. I went to France and the United States. And, and uh, now, right now in New York, is a huge... Um, uh, consultation of Arab Jews uh, in New York, uh, um, from Syria, from Iraq, from different parts of the world. So, uh, just want to make that I, I just wanted to make that uh, difference between the, what's happening and how the Zionists uh, from the Ashkenazi stock looked at the Arab Jews. Actually, what what I, what's so, so uh, interesting, but it's sad, of course. They used to take away their children, and there's books and there's movement on that. They, t they took away many of the Arab Mizrahi Jews, children, to educate them. It's like they did in Canada for the you know the school, you know school, uh, you know uh, boarding uh, school. Uh, yeah, boarding school exactly. So they did that. That they did actually um, some women who had pregnant and they went to the hospital like for some they had to do a c-section and they put them under anesthesia they steal her baby and give it to a uh, uh, childless uh, uh, Ashkenazis and when she wakes up where's my yeah where's my child so yeah, it, it died it was uh, stillborn and we have to and it's, it's hundreds of babies like this and it's everybody knows about it and nobody's talking about how about they did and treated the Arab Jews. But sadly, sadly, those Arab Jews now are the most Arab Zionists against their own blood, the Arab, Arab uh, Arabs in Palestine and Lebanon. Yeah. yeah. But the thing that even, even the Ashkenazim um, in the Zionist states, they had to be, let's say, de Ashkenazized. They had to stop speaking Yiddish. They had to lose uh, all their culture. They had to become like this new uh, Jabotinsky fantasy of the blonde, blue eyed Germanic Hebrew. So hmm. all the, the Ash all, 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 all the Yiddishkeit, all everything that was typical of Ashkenazi culture had to disappear. If you yes. read what, what Ben Gurion or, or Jabotinsky wrote about the shit, about the um, Jewish person in the diaspora, it, you can put it next to Goebbels. It's actually the same vile anti Semitic rhetoric. Yes. Um, but then um, by putting, bringing Jewish blood to Jewish soil, so it's a blood and soil uh, ideology, as I said several times, by bringing that back somehow magically, the, these uh, uh, um, very bad Ashkenazi Jit people would become the new Hebrew Ubermensch. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry, for lack of a better term, probably they had better words for that, but it's exactly the same rhetoric. Yeah. Mm -hmm. However, and, uh, however, they've, this they've is very created... important. So, so just just to to make a, I want to make a point yes. about the Ashkenazi state. Mm -hmm. 
which is still until now is an Ashkenazi white state. Although yes. about half of it is is brown people, but they are a, you know a white state. Uh, now the Hebrew is spoken in Palestine, which is called modern Hebrew, which is half of it is invented by, uh, 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 I think, Ukrainian or Russian uh, migrate, created this called modern Hebrew. It, it's been uh, uh, pronounced or, or, or used from the Western perspective, like the different letters in the Semitic language, which comes from the throat, all Europeans cannot use it, so they they morph it be, morph to become. Uh, when a Westerner speak Arabic, he said and says uh, uh, Chaim, his name is Chaim. Okay, the mm-hmm. Cha you hear in Hebrew, lots of lots of uh, the Ach. Okay, because there's lots of letters, like we have about four letters come from the throat, so is in the Hebrew, but because Europeans cannot use them, okay, so. Uh, they use this uh, sound more often than it should be. Therefore, when you when you the Arab Jews they spoke if the right way, the right the right Hebrew, but they were forced to use the European the European pronunciation of the uh, the Hebrew. Now the Arabs like me, like in Palestine, who speak Hebrew, they could uh, you know they could. Uh, recognize them because they speak the the right way of Hebrew. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Wow. So, uh, it's, so um, it's um, sickening. It's dialect. absolutely sickening. Wow, yeah. so separate now, that they it, have their own dialect. Ashkenazi, yeah. It's Ashkenazi Hebrew dialect. It's the the official language of yeah. the Zionist colonists. Yes, and not oh. Arabic and not Yiddish. <laughs> yeah. No, wow. no, no, no. Yiddish is not, is not allowed in, in the Zionist state. Yeah, yeah. My, my. Very good. Okay. Very good. Okay. So uh, I hope that we can all meet again next week. And uh, I think this has yep. uh, been uh, an enlightening experience for us and certainly should be for everyone else. Thanking you very much for your participation here in the here and now. Because and uh, having all these. So one question you... to everybody. Because um, there has been like this report from the United Nations very recently calling what the Zionist state is doing extermination. And I would just like to have the reaction of these distinguished people that I uh, have the honor uh, of being with now. Because I really think that this is another important step in, in the legal struggle. Agreed. Or am I understanding it wrong? Agreed. I agree. Yes. I think the, the legal struggle needs to be uh, um, not forgotten. It, it's an avenue of struggle that we have to use in all circumstances. Mm-hmm. And if this is what has come out, uh, we mm-hmm. should highlight the fact that, that this has been that this has been the characterization of what's occurring, mm-hmm. and and the implications of what that means. Yeah, extermination. Yes. This week, you know, that's the issue. Yes, as Ahmed has already reported now, there's 400,000 who are completely encircled in northern Gaza with no access whatsoever to the outside, you know, necessities. So this has to be broken this week. Yes. So from October 7th, the Zionist leadership, all, um, like a a chorus, saying this is the, the, the last war. This is the war of independence. This is uh, the sure existence us uh, us on our land. That's what they're saying. So this is the last war between us and them. There will be no other wars. And I am I am confident that despite all their genocide and war of extermination against the Palestinian people and on Lebanon, will not end to their favor. They will be the end of their third Reich. They will be destroyed as a state. The Zionists will have then they will have to pay for their crimes, and there will be in, in new Nuremberg trials to the criminal Zionists. The Palestinian state will be from the sea to the from the river to sea to the sea, whereas all people in Palestine will live free 
free from apartheid, free from racism, free from Nazism, free from Zionism. I am very, very optimistic. I know we got to pay a lot of blood, but it's worth it. Sure? Thank you. Okay.